For this approach, instead of minimizing the sum of the squares of our offsets, we're going to be minimizing their absolutes directly in order to find our best fitting hyperplane, which corresponds to a cost function of j equals the sum from i equals 1 to the length of our data set of the absolute of yi minus theta transpose xi. And one would ask here, why haven't we done this in so long? Why did we start by putting the square right here? And the answer is that first, ordinary least squares is more stable. And even more important, it's much easier. Meanwhile, the least absolute deviations approach is more robust. Now we should be seeking to minimize this cost function and this is not going to be so easy to do because you know that the derivative of the absolute of any function f of x is equal to the absolute of f of x divided by f of x multiplied by the derivative of f of x which verifies our point right here because if we had f of x all squared then the derivative would be 2 multiplied by f of x multiplied by the derivative of f of x. So instead of following the traditional approach, we're going to try to write this down in terms of weighted least squares. And we know that we can write this in terms of weighted least squares if we write down j equals the sum from i equals 1 to the length of our data set of yi minus theta transpose xi squared multiplied by our weight which in this case should be 1 over the absolute of yi minus theta transpose xi so you know that this should be just equivalent to that because x squared over absolute x is equal to the absolute of x and the fact here is that we've already come up with a solution for the weighted least squares approach and that was theta is going to be equal to x transpose w x all inverse multiplied by x transpose w y and here we've got a problem and that is that the weight itself is going to be a function of theta so this in fact is going to be an iterative scheme this is not a closed form solution and in fact, least absolute deviations does lack a closed form solution because of this property right here. Now, regardless to whether you try to do it this way or just use weighted least squares, you're going to arrive at this iterative scheme. And the way in which you're going to get this iterative scheme to work is by first initializing theta as a random vector plugging into your weight matrix which is just a diagonal matrix of this you have your x and y from your data set so we're gonna find this whole product and get your new theta then take that new theta back get a newer theta and keep the cycle going till convergence now let us go back and talk about the stability and robustness of the least absolute deviations approach and let us do it in action this time so we're going to be doing this on Mathmati, which is a numerical analysis website done by sophomore computer engineering students at Cairo University. And they do have least absolute deviations implemented, so I'm going to click on that. And here we're first asked for the number of iterations or a stopping criteria. So the stopping criteria is just uh, the percentage of change between the older and the newer theta that would bring the iterations into a halt. We're going to just focus on iteration so let me write down maybe 1000 that should be enough and then for the data set let's use 10 and that's enough so let us click on calculate and what we see here is two lines the yellow line is going to be our least absolute deviations line and the white line is going to be the least squares line you see they have an angle of 7.431 degrees included between them and we can tell that the LAD approach has converged because by looking at the cost functions derivative we can observe that it's almost zero 
Okay, now let us bring up the instability property of least absolute deviations. Let us try to click on calculate again. And look at the line. It's a different one with a different angle. Let's calculate again. It's a different one. And what's happening here is that with every new initialization of our random vector theta, we get a different line that makes the error as minimum as possible. So each time we click calculate, we still have that derivative that's approaching zero, but we get a different line. And this means that you can often perturb the slope and the intercept of a least absolute deviations line with keeping the distances between the line and the data set. It's like you're taking some distance from some points and giving that to other points. Um, now let us talk about the robustness property of least absolute deviations. I'm gonna put down here maybe 15 or just 14 and 100. And let's click on calculate. Now it's clear that the least squares line is a very terrible fit. It has given a lot of emphasis to this outlier and this is how least absolute deviations eclipses the least squares approach in terms of robustness. Least absolute deviations doesn't have this problem because you're only taking the absolutes. So you're not giving any more emphasis to faraway points and you're getting a fair fit overall.